Welcome, Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler. This is uh, your first time uh, to visit with us and up for discussion. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Um, so you wrote a, a, a pretty compelling op-ed in the June 23rd Post-Dispatch arguing that the military threat from China merits uh, a sense of urgency regarding uh, U.S. defense preparedness. Could you recap the, the main points of that op-ed? Sure. Well, China is a real threat. It's not a near competitor. It is a real competitor, and they have a exceeded our military capabilities, even in some areas. They have invested a 75% increase over the last decade in their military capabilities. And we have to take them seriously. Uh, and yet at the same time, President Biden's budget uh, cuts defense in real dollars by $4 billion and includes a stop, uh, stopping the purchase of F-18 Super Hornets, which of course are produced there in St. Louis, and we're so proud of that platform. The Navy already has 49 aircraft shortage, which is the equivalent to an aircraft carrier wing shortage of F-18s right now, which are the workhorse. They're the backbone of our Navy tactical air uh, assets. And so with stopping the production, that is going to create an even more uh, gap in our capabilities increase too much operational risk that we cannot take. That's why yesterday when we had a hearing in Armed Services Committee with the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Secretary of Defense, I made a case for the F-18s and, and told them that I'm going to be trying to do everything I can as ranking member of the Tactical Air and Land Forces Subcommittee to get and find the money for uh, production of 12 additional uh, F-18s this year. I think it's critical that we keep this capability and we are able to meet any risk and any threat in the world, including in China. So what is the sense you get from the Biden administration? Certainly they're, they're fully aware of, of what China is up to, particularly in the South China Sea. Uh, do you get a sense from them that, that they don't take it seriously uh, or that they do treat this as a matter of urgency? Well, they do take it seriously in that they continue to want to invest in future capabilities. The next generation aircraft, which is under design and concept stage, but that is several years down the road before that is even uh, decided and begins production. And we cannot have this gap of, of operational risk in between. And I don't understand why uh, the president has prioritized investing in the other aspects of government with a 16% increase, but yet decreasing the amount of money in defense. I think those are the wrong priorities that one of the few things we should be doing here in Congress and the most important thing is to provide for the common defense. And with the threats that we are seeing from China, you mentioned the, the buildup in the South China Sea, they're very aggressive stance against Taiwan, who is our ally, and we have an agreement to defend them uh, with when we see what the Chinese are doing in space and the investments they are making, we have got to provide the capabilities necessary to deter them and to meet the threat if we need to. Uh, this is a very, very serious situation. Now, I can understand uh, in the South China Sea, the, the, the importance of having a, a, a strong naval presence there uh, uh, because uh, uh, China has uh, staged numerous uh, examples of expansionism, uh, 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 creating a, a kind of a massive naval base in the China Sea, threatening uh, the, the uh, Asian Pacific nations. Um, but where in all of this is, is there a, a specific air threat that the United States needs to pre prepare for? I can understand the Navy part of it, and you make that case in the op-ed regarding the Navy, but, but is, th is, is this specifically an air issue? Well, it, it certainly is. They go hand in hand. The F-18 flies off of the aircraft carriers. That is the, the air asset that we need to be able to defend in the Indo-Pacific region. And these, uh, the deployments of our aircraft carriers have really been strained because there have been so many 
threats around the world. We've had increased deployments of the uh, aircraft carriers in the Middle East uh, to, to ward off uh, some of the, and deter the threats from Iran, uh, Russia, uh, you know, you, you name, there's a lot of it, things going on in the Middle East, but then also increased deployments in the Indo-Pacific. And so these aircraft carriers have been flying more than was anticipated. And many of them are beyond their service life, or certainly this is very, very concerning. Um, and so we have to replace them with new aircraft care, I mean, with new F-18s, uh, because the ones that are flying are running out of their uh, service life sooner than, than normal. And just to keep this in context, many Americans don't know, but China has the largest army in the world. They have the, the largest Navy in the world. They have the third largest Air Force. They are very aggressive in the space uh, aspect. And that's why one reason we stood up the Space Force because they have the satellites and capabilities in space, which could take out GPS and, and do other things that would be very detrimental. Um, so we have to take them seriously. We have to replace these aging, these old uh, F-18s, and we have to fill the gap of the shortage right now. Like I said, already they are short 49 aircraft than what they really need. Um, so that's why I'm gonna be fighting to try to get more F-18s in this year's budget. So you're, you're from Cass County in, in Central West Missouri. Uh, I, I don't think there's a major Boeing presence there uh, the way there is here. Uh, I'm just curious, in a, in a kind of a broader sense, uh, Missouri is here, China is way over there. Why should Missourians really care about this? Well, because they care about our country, first of all, and freedom, and uh, they care about their sons and daughters who, if there is a conflict with China, if China tries to take back Taiwan, uh, we are obligated to go to war and to defend them, and their sons and daughters uh, could go and, and be in that fight. And we do not want to have uh, a fight with China. We want to deter them, and China, China understands strength. Uh, they respect strength. And that's why we've got to have the military capabilities that we need. And we also need to strengthen our relationships with our allies in that area. And that is a diplomacy uh, a function of both the State Department as well as our, the, the Department of Defense. And we've been doing that, building those relationships with Australia, Vietnam, Japan, uh, the Philippines, others. But that is going to be key because that's an advantage that we typically have had that China does not have. China does not have friends. And that is um, because they are not a friendly people. They have a goal of world dominance and they are moving forward with that. And that's, I would encourage everyone to go to my official website at hartzler.house.gov because I've produced a four part video series that lays out all the threats that we are facing from China. And I think every American needs to be aware of this. The first one covers the military threats, second, the economic threats, the Belt and Road Initiative, debt trap diplomacy, all the, the strategic things that China's doing with their money. The third one talks about malign influence, what they're doing with soft propaganda around the world, Confucius Institutes and others to shape public opinion towards them, and fourth, the human rights abuses. And just to, to point out, I am one of the few members of Congress, I have been sanctioned by the communist, uh, Chinese Communist Party because of my role as a commissioner on the Congressional Executive Commission on China. We produce a yearly report looking at the human rights abuses of China and exposing them. And because of my vocal, um, uh, vocal advocacy for the people of China, the Uyghurs who are in concentration camps, the Christians who are in, uh, in prisons, what they're doing, the Falun Gong and the uh, harvesting of organs. I've exposed that, been vocal against that, and so they have sanctioned me. But Americans need to know the threat, need to know that the uh, party, Communist Party, is evil in their intent, and we need to be prepared accordingly. So uh, finally, in closing, uh, uh, what is uh, the potential... Uh, economic impact for uh, Missouri and particularly the St. Louis area if uh, Boeing doesn't uh, find a way to, to revive the Super Hornet program and has to start production cutbacks? 
You bet. Well, it's my understanding there's about 16,000 jobs uh, in St. Louis related to the F-18, um, about 60 thousand overall uh, the country when you look at the subcontractors the suppliers a three billion dollar economic impact in total I don't know specifically for the St. Louis area but it is it is concerning I was there last week and toured the uh, production line for the F-18 met with Boeing officials the good news is is that there are other countries interested in purchasing the F-18 Germany is looking at it Switzerland's looking at it, some others, but the concern is they are not interested in purchasing them for several years. Mm. And so that would create this gap to the production line that would make it very difficult. Uh, what are you going to do with these 16,000 people for, for a couple of years? That's one reason we have to get this uh, put back in the budget this year for the United States to continue to, to purchase them. We need them, as I've laid out the, the reasons why but also it'll help fill that gap. And um, you know, perhaps we can keep this line going for years to come, having other countries come in and pick up production down the road. But right now we've got to address this crisis that we have now, which is uh, President Biden proposing to, to cease uh, purchasing the F-18 this year. All right, well, we'll have to end it there. Uh, Congresswoman Vicki Hartzler, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, it's been great.